Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. I hope everybody can hear me okay. My audio, audio appears to be coming through okay. Uh, welcome. We're, it's promptly 1 o'clock, maybe 101. I was unsure which one I kind of wanted to exert on the side of caution, let everybody get a chance to get signed in. Uh, we're here to talk about reworking and revising your accounting chart of accounts today. Before we get started on that, we're going to get started on it pretty quickly. It's a kind of a hefty topic a little bit. First, no handout or attachment for today's event. Uh, it's kind of putting together a bunch of things from various portions of the workbooks and what have you and the help files. I'm just here to show you, kind of point you around some places where we can talk about reworking that stuff. Uh, we are recording today's event. We, the webinar recording will be out on our support center page sometime here in the next day or two as soon as humanly possible, uh, but you can revisit this later if you wish out on our support center page. Um, we're here till 20 minutes after the hour or so. I'll try to wrap it up as close as I can to that 20 minute time frame as I can. Uh, if you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel. I will do my best to keep an eye on those, and if I can't answer them during the event, I will stick around and happily answer them after you afterwards if I can. May put some of this stuff off to a support call. A lot of these types of questions that come up here are about your particular setup and your chart of accounts. It's not because I don't want to an answer it. I simply don't have enough information to be able to do so. Okay, so you know, please, if you you know, if I say, hey, call me, please do so. We're happy to talk about that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's dive into um, our topic here today. So, okay, so the first thing is, you know, minor changes to our chart of accounts, maybe this might be not quite so important, but certainly if you're considering making broad or sweeping changes to your chart of accounts, whether it's now or for 2022, as the case may be, and that's why we're kind of talking about this now is, you know, we're getting a whole bunch of calls, you know, about this time of year about churches and folks that are making changes to their chart of accounts now in anticipation of the new year, or they're ready to go ahead and open the new year and begin working on making those changes to their chart of accounts now. Um, you can, folks, go ahead and open your chart of accounts for 2022 if that's when you want to make your changes. Okay, uh, there's no requirement to be done with 2021 to open the new year and begin working. Okay, we're not going to talk about the new year pro opening that it's out on the support or out on our uh, New Year prep and help page about that if you're wanting to do that, or of course call us. What I'm really here saying initially is when you're making a change to the anything, you know, big change, small change, you're unsure if you're going to want it. Back up your data. Go to administration at the home screen. Back up. Make a backup of the chart of, uh, of your database itself. It gives you the undo to go back and undo any of the work, you know, with basically two mouse clicks to restore back to where you were. Okay, so as we're revising and reworking the chart of accounts, he says with air quotes, uh, a backup gives me peace of mind to allow and proceed forward with making changes, knowing that I can undo what I did if I don't like it. You may find yourself making, you know, several backups during the course of a reworking or revising process, okay? So just FYI, backups are your best friend. So start there with whatever you're doing. We're hoping you're making bigger the backups anyway, but please make sure you're doing it, especially in this type of situation. First, second, I mean. So the next thing I want to talk about is simply making simply edits or changes to account names and numbers. So you might find, oh, I've got some account names or numbers that I want to edit in my chart of accounts, and we can do that right here at the chart of accounts. Okay, so if I go down here, down, let's collapse all and go down to our expenses. And let's say I go down here and I say find my, you know, like right here, these account names still look like I've got office expense. And I go, oh, that's not consistent enough. I can click right here and I can just type in and change the account names right here at the chart of accounts. A lot of folks are unaware of this, you know. So I can tr click right here under paper mach copy machine and I can just edit anything I want. I'm just choosing to add the word expense, but you can edit anything you want about these account names right here. The only restriction the software puts on you is you simply cannot have two accounts in the chart of accounts with the exact same name. Okay, so if I were to try to put in an account in here that had the same name, it would bark at me or it would pop up with the red dot telling me I can't do that. Okay, but 
editing the account names can all be done right here. Same thing with account numbers. Okay, so right here, when I go up here to say my, you know, uh, internet or gas expense or electric, I can click right here in my number. Notice my cursor is flashing right there, and I can just change that number. Right, sorry, 510, I meant to do that, 361, right here. And I can click off that, and notice my gas expense just changed to 510, 361. Okay. Uh, names and numbers can be edited right here. I go, oh, I don't want that back here. I can change that right back here. The other option we have, and this is one that I frequently walk through folks through on my support calls, is when we highlight an account in the chart of accounts, going to the Tree View tab right here, the same account is highlighted. I can right-click over it in the Tree View and choose Edit Gas. So if I highlight that right here, I can edit the account name here as well, or the number. Lots and lots of flexibility, folks, here for where and how you can edit account names and numbers. The one advantage that I have here under the Edit Account at the Tree View is I can change the subtotal if I wish. So if I go, oh, it shouldn't be in total utilities, it should be somewhere else, I can just click, right-click on it, Edit Account, choose the subtotal from the win menu, and click OK. okay? So again, lots and lots of options for uh, editing account names and numbers in church windows and in accounting, either way. Okay? Again, a lot of, un, lots of folks don't know you can edit the names and numbers right here on the chart of accounts or on the tree view tab. Okay? Uh, the other thing is oftentimes, this is a common one, and I talk about this simply because the linking of accounts in account, you know, in, in this case, particularly income and expenses to their respective funds, is such an important uh, function of the software. We, you know, the income's got to be going into the right fund, or it's got to be the expense has to be coming out of the right fund. That if I click on, say, let me find a different account here. Let's go up here and do like building. So right here, let's say I've got my building fund expense or education building fund expense. If I click on that. We steer our focus over here to the right-hand side, and right here on our Detail tab, we see this menu called Fund, right here, okay? When I've set up and added an income or an expense account to the chart of accounts and linked it to a fund, if I determine later on that that fund, uh, that I linked that account to the wrong fund, the only place I can change it is right here. So if I come in here and I go, oh, well, my building fund expense should have been linked to my education building fund, I just change that right here, okay? So I've just changed that. So whatever my year-to-date total is in my building fund expense, my $4,445, is now going to be switched over, and that's going to be charged to my education building fund, okay? So it only affects the year. It affects the entire year income or expense total, and it only affects it for the current year, okay? So none of these changes that I'm making are going to affect any other year prior to 2021. And it will only take effect for accounts in years that I bring or copy my chart of accounts forward to end of the new year. Okay? So just keep in mind, the only place that I can change the linking for an income or an expense account is right here under the Detail tab on the chart of accounts. Also, uh, changing ledger status for accounts. This is a common one. So right here... When I go up here, we see these, you know, expenses that have these plus signs next to them. These are telling us that the chart that we've set up a ledger accounts with sub expenses or expense accounts with sub accounts in them. So if you decide midstream, whether that's now or in 2022, that you want to move away from that ledger sub ledger relationship, you may absolutely do that. Okay. It doesn't do anything to change account balances. So if I go, okay, I've got my music director salary and benefits, and I don't want to have them linked as sub-accounts and sub-ledgers, I can come right in here under music director salary, click remove from ledger, go right here to music director salary and benefits, remove from ledger. I've now moved those accounts out now, okay, of the ledger. I am now free to go up into, you know, so if I go up to my chart of accounts here, out of, close out of that, go up to manage accounts and subtotals, I can now add an expense subtotal here called total music director's salary 
and benefits. And I can now move those accounts into that subtotal and move away from the ledger subledger relationship. Okay. Um, so just being aware that it's it's it can work one way easier than the other. I can't necessarily move accounts into a ledger quite that easily, all based on current year's activity. But in terms of moving away from a ledger subledger relationship into subtotals, you can absolutely do that at any time. Okay. So now I would simply find those you know, music salary, music directors, right here, music director salary, over here on the right, click the down arrow, choose total minister salary and benefits, move account. Go right up here, choose music director salary and benefits, or music director pension, click the down arrow, choose music director salary and benefits, and notice those now pop in under that new subtotal, moving away from the ledger subledger relationship. Absolutely can be done at any time. But, Pursuant to my webinar I did a couple weeks ago on ledgers subtotals versus subaccounts, that's just something that can be part of, could be part of your reworking of your chart of accounts. Subtotals can be changed at any time. Okay, it could be done now, or I can wait and do it in 2022. But I can simply come in here, click my subtotal, click right here under subtotal name, total utilities expenses. Uh, I've now just changed that subtotal header and on reports for 2021 and beyond. Okay, I can also move accounts around in subtotals at any time. Okay, so just be aware. There's what I'm basically driving at here, folks. Is the software offers an enormous amount of flexibility for us to remove and reorder things, kind of pretty much any time. What we may not be able to do is to necessarily delete accounts. Okay, that requires that we have certain conditions that are met, no activity, no current year activity, no balances, you know, things like that are in play where deleting things may not be permissible because uh, of current year activity and the audit trail that the software offers. But these types of things that I'm talking about right now, editing names and numbers, relinking income and expenses, removing accounts and moving them into from ledgers into subtotals, uh, changing subtotal names, all of that can be done at virtually any time, okay? Uh, when we go up here to special functions at the top, we've got this uh, option right here called change account number structure. When I click on that, basically this is would be a win, it's warning me about exclusive access, so I'm going to click OK on that. So we notice here if I'm wanting to make really broad sweeping changes to my chart of accounts, we've got account number before renumbering on the left and account number after renumbering to the right. So I can, if I'm going to make a big lot of changes to a lot of account numbers, this is where I'm going to do that. You simply click in the box the number where it says after renumbering and notice your cursor is highlighting right in there. You can literally change those numbers right here. Okay. So once you go in and make these changes, you simply click Save, and it saves those changes. If I wanted to change the number of digits that I have in my account numbers, I'm going to go right up here to the upper right to this button that says Change Structure, right up here. Let me get rid of my highlighter there. I click on that, and it opens it up, and it says, hey, what kind of, you know, what, how, you know, do you want to still use account numbers? And if so, how many digits and where do you want those placeholders? Okay, so if I go, okay, I want to add an additional hashtag to that. I click OK. It's one digit. Notice that it adds a trailing digit to all of my account numbers after renumbering. If I were satisfied with that, I could just click Save, and it would change those numbers, all of them. It adds simply a trailing zero to each one of my account numbers. Shortening them becomes a little more tricky. But if you need help with folk, the stuff like this, folks, please don't hesitate to call our support text, myself included. We are happy to uh, talk with you about any of this stuff, okay, to work with you. Uh, if you're looking and you're struggling with it, it might be, a, might be an opportunity for you to consider looking at some of our project helper services when we're making changes to things like this, okay? Uh, it's a paid service that we offer, but if you're unsure and you're a little fearful about it, it might be something where it could be good use of the church's money to, to seek our, our paid assistance with that, okay? So if I did was happy with that, I could simply click Save, okay? 
what you have to look for in this renumber chart of accounts window is, uh, is, is red. So basically anything that's in red, I don't think I'll get anything if I were to do that. I think it would if I were to go in and try to reduce my chain account number structure. So if I try to shorten those numbers and click OK, ah, see, now it's basically just detecting that I've got a lot of conflicts in my 5, 10, 400 series in here. And I'm probably if I go up the list, there's going to be a number more. So that's what I mean about how shortening those account number, shortening those account numbers becomes a little bit more tricky. I would have to come in here and click in and change those account numbers. Like notice it says 4, 10, 21. I would have to change those to something different. Like one of these I would have to change to maybe like 22. 22, he said. And if I click off that, notice that conflict goes away. So I'd have to deal with these conflicts before I would be able to click the Save button. It won't permit me to save it while there are conflicts in play. I'm not saving any of this. So I would simply click um, Cancel on that, and it would go back to my default, you know, my, my regular account numbers. Okay. Only when I've clicked Save is that going to make those um, changes or save those changes permanently. But, if, folks, if you're considering using the Change Account Numbers, the Renumber Chart of Accounts right here, to make changes to a lot of account numbers simultaneously, we can't stress the importance of, uh, of making a backup of your data. It is so important that, that, that you would need to make, that you would want to make a backup. I would, I simply wouldn't use this and make a, a lot of changes to a lot of account numbers without having a backup to undo that. It may call me crazy, but it would be, it's the tech in me that basically says, you know, I want to have an out. I want to have an undo for this if I if I don't like the work that I've done. Okay, um, let's see here. What else? So again, we've gone through changing account names and account numbers right here at the chart of account. Option number one for changing those. Again, it's only changing them for 2021 and beyond. Okay, uh, and also editing them at the tree view is another way that you can go about doing that. Uh, editing or changing those names or numbers or subtotals as the case may be. Uh, going in and editing and reworking your subtotals here under manage accounts, working with sub accounts and moving away from those. Okay, if you're considering moving away from that. Uh, and again, only these changes are occurring. Finally, before we cl close things up for the day and I'll see what questions are out there, under special functions, manage years, delete unused accounts. One of the things that I see folks as a technician having done this for almost 20 years at this point is uh, that uh, users are unaware that when you delete accounts, you're only deleting them from the accounting year that you're working in. You are not affecting any other accounting years. So if I go into my delete unused accounts here or delete any of these accounts, I am only deleting those from 2021 and beyond. I am not deleting them from 2020 and earlier. Okay, so clean up your chart of accounts on an annual basis. I believe we've got a video and a document on uh, chart, cleaning up the chart of accounts or deleting unused accounts out on the support center page. This could take, you know, a 20 or 30 page chart of accounts down or more in some cases I've seen and get it down to a manageable list of accounts that you're working with actively uh, in the current period uh, without affecting the past. Okay. Such an important step here. There's no audit history in this window in 2021 that you have to worry about, no balances in these accounts, and you could really, really get a good handle on and on your chart of accounts and get it into a manageable state by simply deleting those. Okay. Finally, if you decide that things are really super dire, you could, when you're setting up your new year under manage years and setting up your new accounting year, yes, I'm going to say yes to that. Right here, you could also consider setting up and creating a brand new chart of accounts for 2022, essentially establishing a line in time between 2021 and earlier and 2022 and the future. Okay, so that is where I'm going to end what I'm discussing today.